As we ended the doc sequence with a focus on UC San Diego's student activism during World War II and their fight for representation on campus, my partner and I have decided to use our doc teachings in our cultural analysis project of San Diego County. Having lived in La Jolla for the better of eight months, we have observed that the demographic of our surrounding community is one lacking diversity and heavily concentrated with older, upper-class Caucasians. By intersecting the elements of class and race, we have worked to reveal the redlining throughout San Diego County. The historical presence of hegemonic racial segregation and use of restrictive covenants in select neighborhoods has continued the implementation of subjective practices that reinforce the ideologies of white supremacy and class elitism. With our analysis of the historical barriers against the integration of higher society, we see how current discriminatory practices have led to the distribution of race and class in San Diego into distinct neighborhoods where any form of real diversity is nowhere to be seen. We begin our investigation down south at the Mexican and United States border, heading north towards Imperial Beach. We were lucky enough to stumble across an old war veteran fishing on the pier. Experience any um, sort of discrimination coming back from the Navy once you were out or anything? Uh, like? not, not at all. Not, not, not lately, but you know, during the 60s, uh -huh. I'd say they was, do. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they have yeah. a lot of uh, discrimination. Because, uh... The Fair Housing Act of 1968 made it illegal to outlaw the purchasing of property on the basis of race. Prior communities such as La Jolla continued selectively picking who they sold real estate to. In the future, more subtle tactics to control the demographics would be used. the Latino population? Is there like, a, lot, a lot of Latinos in this area? Well, uh, Mexican population, yeah. They have a lot. All over the state, they have a lot. The impacts of redlining have planted the roots of minority subcultures in isolated locations from the more prosperous areas. You know, if you're poor, how can you live <laughs> yeah. side by side with him? Yeah. <laughs> you got a mansion here. <laughs> As newly arriving immigrants enter the United States, they are set at a disadvantage, unable to gain life-improving opportunities in their struggle to fit in with America's master narrative. We ventured north to visit Barrio Logan and Chicano Park, where we gained more of a perspective from the Hispanic community. Chicano Park is home to the county's largest collection of murals dedicated to the cultural heritage of the community. A predominantly Hispanic area, Chicano Park represents the minority voice and history in San Diego. The park is located directly under the Coronado Bridge in a lower working class neighborhood. Are you working right now? Yes. You are? What's your occupation? A driver. A driver? Yeah. Nice. Cool. Uh, what brings you to the park today? Well, I love the park and my today's my day off and tomorrow's my day off. So I joined with my buddy right here. See if we could trim the, the cactus and, and make it more appealing to it. Racially or through class? Anywhere. Anywhere? Anywhere in the United States. To me, the racial thing is not an issue. It's not an issue because I, I don't see someone, as I see you, as I see him, I don't see him for the color of their skin. To me, everybody is equal. And depending on their acts, that's what makes them. In terms of good yeah, bad, that's okay. what determines if you're going to kick it with them, if, if through our observations, most minorities believe the reasons behind San Diego's racial division were through the differences in economic opportunities and social status. Do you know what La Jolla is? Yes. Uh, what would you say the demographic of La Jolla is compared to here in terms of like cultural like makeup? Okay, La Jolla, because it's uh, very expensive to live right there, I would say it's like 90% white. 5% black, 5% Latino. Mm -hmm. Anything? Uh, yeah. Which doesn't, it, 
it is what it is, you know. If I had the money to live in La Jolla, I would live in La Jolla. Because La Jolla is beautiful. You know what La Jolla is? It's the jewel. The jewel? Jewel. Huh. When you're talking about a jewel, it's more precious than gold. In 1962, with the construction of La Jolla Shores, the only people who were permitted to own property rights had to be of pure European ancestry. This excluded Jews as they were not considered to be white regardless of their skin color. This is uh, Barrio Logan, this name, Barrio Logan. The barrio in Mexico is one uh, national city, mm -hmm. San Diego. So it's different colonies. This is Barrio. Taking the bridge directly over Chicano Park, we traveled to the affluent community of Coronado. I'm hustling every day. I'm every day. I'm every day. I'm hustling 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 every day. I'm every day. I'm every day. I'm hustling. As we crossed into Coronado, we realized the bridge symbolized the pathway and also the coexisting barrier that exists between two very different communities. The presence of the bridge, towering and imposing, directly over the park that represents Latino heritage, evokes the ideology of U.S. imperialism and racial dominance. Coronado is predominantly a wealthy, well-developed resort community. Its lavish scenery and isolation promote the ideology of exclusivity and class elitism, similarly to that seen in La Jolla. The Coronado Hotel and Yacht Club symbolize the privileges of the upper class and its restrictions to outsiders. As we searched for residents to interview, many refused to be recorded on film. They politely answered our questions, but were very apprehensive about their participation. From our results, Coronado is home to many middle upper class families. Residents believe the upper representation of minorities on the island is due to economic factors rather than racial resistance. However, what most participants fail to recognize were the disproportional factors that contribute to one's pursuit in the master narrative. We analyzed our most northern point in Del Mar. We interviewed a local first aid officer who gave us some insight on the local population. Del Mar was first purchased by Colonel Jacob Taylor in 1885. Only 388 acres to start, he bought it with the intention and vision of building a seaside resort for the rich and famous. From its beginning, Del Mar has promoted its racialized exclusivity, targeting the white upper classes as residents. At last, we return home to beautiful La Jolla, San Diego. We wanted to see if our fellow students recognized the same inequalities and underrepresentations as we had. 
How long have you been in school here? Three years. Three years. What do you think of La Jolla? It's kind of like Thousand Oaks. <laughs> it's kind of like a fake, fake world. It's kind of like a fake, fake world. What do you think is the general makeup slash demographic of La Jolla? Uh, rich white people. <laughs> uh, why do you think La Jolla is not very integrated? What, define integrated for me? Presence of other races besides white. Uh, they cannot afford to live here based on disproportionately distributed educational opportunities. What do you think of La Jolla? A lot like heaven, I think. Yeah. <laughs> what, good, yeah. what do you think is the general makeup or like demographic of La Jolla? Wow, La Jolla, it's interesting because La Jolla, I think, is like a very wealthy community. So I would assume well, okay. white demographics, but being on this college campus, it really does kind of mix up. Uh, Why do you think La Jolla isn't very integrated? I would say mainly the economic factor. Do you think San Diego County in general is divided either racially or through class? Um, not purposefully, but I feel like a lot of economic and uh, social factors uh, sort of frame uh, demographics unconsciously. Like there's more free, if you're more economically savvy, you're, you have more freedom to live where you want to. And unfortunately there are trends with, I believe. With this project, we attempted to create a counter-narrative by analyzing the divisions between the upper and lower class. The separation and lack of integration of San Diego County in not only its real estate market, but also its economic and social industries presents the problem of redlining that exists to this day. This indirect discrimination only reinforces the stereotypes and furthers the racial antagonism against minority groups, making it impossibly difficult to restructure their racial identity.